everyone, Wrath of the Druids, the first big DLC for Valhalla, has been released. And if you haven't played it yet, I know you're dying to know if it's worth getting. So let me help you with that. I'll review the entire DLC with no story spoilers so that you can enjoy it at your own pleasure. Though small main game spoilers might be included in the story section. But first, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel if you want more Assassin's Creed content, and to follow me on my socials to always keep up to date with what I do. Alright, so without further Further ado, let's jump right in. Wrath of the Druids is the first big expansion for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. With the Siege of Paris coming later in the year, and a mysterious third expansion being a rumor for now. Curiously enough, it's also the first big AC project developed by Ubisoft Bordeaux Studio. In this DLC, you get to visit a portion of the beautiful island of Ireland and take part in all of the politics and conflicts between the Irish kings. I want to start by talking about the map of Ireland. I have to admit that, at first, I was afraid they were going to give us the entire island to explore, which in turn would mean boring treks across the land to get from one place to another. But no, we actually get a decent chunk of Ireland to explore and it feels about the right size. Not too big and not too small, with a lot of activities and stuff to do peppered throughout the land. The island itself looks amazing and I was constantly stopping to take photos in the photo mode, as the landscapes in this DLC are simply breathtaking. I do have to point one thing out though. Dublin was ultimately a bit disappointing to me. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful city, but you weren't there for long and it felt underwhelming compared to cities like London or Jorvik. Also, why are London and Jorvik using their historical names for London and York and Dublin is not called Dyflin? I guess it's just a small nitpick, but I would love to see that attention to detail. Overall, I absolutely loved visiting Ireland and I think it was a great location to play in, although this visit could have been more eventful and more fulfilling, let's say. Let's go over some gameplay aspects of the DLC so that you can understand what I mean. There are some pretty cool additions to the gameplay department in this DLC, and some missteps in my opinion. Throughout Ireland, there are several ring forts that function as trade posts. It's where you can spend your trade supplies gained by raiding monasteries or villages. You spend them by upgrading each ring fort, which in turn will increase the rate at which they generate riches. It's a cool spin on the whole fort bandit camp idea that actually gives you a reason to go there and clear it, and once you do, actually transforms itself into a useful and important way for you to generate more resources. And I mentioned that these ring forts generate riches, right? What do you do with them? Well, Dublin is a city that can be upgraded. And as you upgrade it, you receive cool rewards like new gear or tattoos. By getting more and more trade posts, your Dublin riches chest fills up faster. Sort of like a passive resource generation. And you can come collect them in Dublin whenever you feel like it. Right next to the chest, you have Azar, which you meet pretty much at the start of the DLC. By speaking to Azar, she allows you to deliver several riches for trading with other nations, in return for the aforementioned rewards. I do have to say that I was quite surprised by the amount of cool gear we got for completing these delivery contracts. I was afraid that the DLC was not going to include many free outfits and weapons, but what we get here is quite a good amount of free gear. There are other ways of acquiring riches, such as the royal demands. You can get these by accessing pigeon coops spread around Ireland, mainly in Dublin and in the trade posts. In these you'll find contracts, which are simple quests that upon completion will give you riches for your trades. Attached to these quests is a feature from previous Assassin's Creed titles, optional objectives which, in this case, they're called King's Pleas. Stuff like don't get detected, no unnecessary kills, etc. And really, completing these is not as stressing as in previous games, because they only give you extra riches on quest completion if you abide by the King's Plea. I personally like these types of objectives. It's just a shame that the stealth is still very much broken in Valhalla with a lot of hive mind and instant detections flying around everywhere. But I still enjoy doing these missions whenever I need riches and when the stealth works, it can look pretty good. 
Besides these quests, there are many world activities for you to do. Stuff like berserkers, cursed artifacts, treasure hordes, offerings, cairns unfortunately, new fights like the Trials of Morrigan and even new legendary animals to face. And I can't lie here, I was super disappointed with the world activities in this DLC. I would easily take the cairns, treasure hordes and offerings, which are mostly just collecting stuff, and replace them with world events present in the main game. That's right, Wrath of the Druids does not not include any world event. None. And it's one of the biggest missed opportunities in this DLC. To tell us stories of Ireland and its culture through crafted world event quests would be so good, and would be more meaningful than just collecting 5 big surgeons to offer to a rock. In the bug department, I'm sad to report that there's still lots, lots of bugs. Now, let's go to the new stuff added to this DLC. There are three new abilities added to the game. The first one is the Irish Wolfhound, which you can use while in battle, and summon a battle dog to help you fight your enemies. This one always felt weird to me, so I practically never used it. The second one is Vikinger Salute, where Eivor tries to grab an enemy and, if successful, gives them a big headbutt, leaving them stunned for some time. I've used this ability mostly to disrupt those pesky enemies that are always turtling up, which is a big issue with Valhalla's combat system by the way. I have a video on that, check out the card up above or the description. And finally, the best of them all, with a bit of a bittersweet feeling, the smoke bomb arrow. This was a long time coming. In reality, I would prefer a usable tool system, where you would throw a smoke bomb. But at this point, I cannot expect the devs to just change the engine of the game that much. So finally having a targetable way to use a smoke bomb is amazing. I highly recommend getting this ability as it will help your stealthy endeavors tremendously. But I mentioned the bittersweet feeling, right? Well, that's because if you collect the Tome of Knowledge that upgrades this set ability, every smoke bomb arrow you shoot explodes whenever it touches fire, doing exactly the opposite of what you're trying to do, be stealthy. Initially you might not think that this is a problem, but it is. Because there's fire everywhere, fire on the ground, fire on the torches, fire on enemies carrying torches, oh my god so much fire. So, if you upgrade this ability, you've gotta be extra careful to make sure you won't explode in a ball of fire. There was also a new type of weapon added to the game, the sickle. This is a weapon that I was very excited about, and it is cool to a degree, but it ultimately disappointed me for its usefulness in battle. With an axe, Eivor actually reaches for the target with a meaningful attack. With a sickle, I felt like the range was really small and I was left mostly just swinging at air most of the time. So, all in all, the sickles are a cool addition, but I think they need to be touched on a bit more to make them a bit more useful in combat. For me, the story was more of a miss than a hit. It's a bit hard to explain without spoilers, but I think I can show you what I mean. So, to start, the story feels like a traditional Valhalla England arc, but it's way longer than those present in the main game, of course. It starts off with a lot of Irish politics, which can be fine, but we've already spent countless hours in England dealing with very, very similar stuff. And after some time, the mystery of the Druids starts unraveling. And it's here that I think that the story starts to get interesting, but ultimately loses steam. Not because of the story itself, I think it's fine, but because of the mission design. It's revealed in the story that there's a group called the Children of Danu. These are targets that you have to kill, similarly to the Order of the Ancients. Problem is, there are a few moments in which you have to kill one of these targets to move the story along. So you have to do the usual find all the clues and kill them. This breaks up the flow of the game and the story. Now you have to constantly open up the menu to check things while navigating through the world. It's almost like it pulls the brake on everything for you and it just halts to a stop suddenly. I don't particularly like this type of design because if I'm immersed in the game and the story, I'm gonna be pulled out of that immersion by now having to constantly open and close menus. And it doesn't help that whenever you kill a target, there's no memory corridor confession. That's right, nothing. So the Druid it just dies and that's it, time to move on. This doesn't help the fact that the story stopped, asks you to kill this seemingly important druid and you get nothing. It has crossed my mind though that it might be because this takes place after the main game so Wavor has fully repressed Odin from her conscience, thus the memory corridor not happening. It's a possibility, I don't know, let me know in the comments below. The story tries to pull a few twists to surprise you and at the end, I felt like what was happening could maybe salvage 
salvage the rest of the experience. But even with that, I was left disappointed. It resulted in basically nothing. All in all, it's interesting, but there's no advancement of Eivor's personal story. It ends, and that's just that. Nothing else happens. It's kind of like a filler arc. Not to mention that there's no advancement of the modern day storyline either, which ultimately left me sad. this is an enjoyable DLC. It's a DLC you can pick up and still have fun exploring a new gorgeous map. I would recommend it to people that really enjoyed the gameplay loop of the main game and that are just looking for a self-contained experience. Personally, I felt really disappointed because I had different expectations for the first big DLC and I feel like I'm gonna keep the same expectations for the Siege of Paris. It must be better. For that one, I really think they need to address the shortcomings of the Wrath of the Druids. Alright, I hope I was able to help you figure out if Wrath of the Druids is worth it for you. If you want more Assassin's Creed content, remember to subscribe to the channel and to follow me on my socials. I have a lot of Valhalla and Wrath of the Druids content coming in the next few days, so stay tuned. Also, if you've enjoyed my review, please consider leaving a like as it helps the channel out a lot. I'll see you all next time. Bye!